Hi everyone, welcome to Pawpaw's Workshop. I want to take just a few minutes today and show you how to do a different type of production run. I know in the past I've shown you how to set it up with the bump stops to be able to do a production run where all you have to do is pull one piece out, put another piece in, and keep going. Well, that still wastes a lot of time. Today I'm going to show you how to do the same thing, only we're going to carve all of them at once. And you can also use multiple designs. So let's get started. Hey, have you ever wanted to do a production run and you didn't want to do it where it was just one at a time and changing them out with a bump stop? What if there was a way that you could do the production run and run multiple designs at the same time? Well, that's what I want to show you how to do. And what I've got here is four different designs of the coasters. And I want to do a production run and I want to be able to do it all at once without having to change them out. And the key to being able to do this is all of the material needs to be exactly the same size and it needs to be the same thickness. Because as far as the computer is concerned and easel is concerned, it's all one big project. It's not a bunch of individual pieces sitting on the CNC machine. All right, so the question becomes, how am I going to do this? I know that this is a 4x4 four four size material that I'm using. And I know that each of these designs fit into that 4x4. Four four. So all I really need to do is highlight this and select this over here on the shape for the center. Now I have this for a center point and I can move this around. Okay, to be able to make this work, I need to be able to make sure that I can maneuver each of these. So I'm going to set this up as the center. And if you'll notice, this is three and a half by three and a half. Okay, that is the actual size of it. But where is it positioned? It's positioned dead center on my XY axis at two and two. So right there is the actual center for it. So if I do the same thing, if I move this over where the next one is going to be sitting right next to this, if I have this set at six and two, then that's going to be exactly where I need to have it. So if I highlight this and I set my XY at 6 and 2, that positions it directly down next to this piece. So if I have a piece of material that sits right in here, it's going to be perfectly centered. Now I'm going to do the same thing with this one. Now I need to be able to have it at 10 and 2. And there you go. That's going to be centered. And let's put the last one in place. 14 and 2. Okay, so now then I have these set where this is at 2, 4, and then 10, and then 14. So those will make it where my four inch squares, and let's just test this out real quick. If I have a four inch square, and let's set that up, let's lock this and make this four inches. And let's do it where we're going to cut this on path. All right. And then I can take this and you can see that if I put these on the C machine, exactly on top of where they need to sit that they're going to be centered. And that's what I want to be able to do. Now then, I want to do a production run and I don't want to have just one of each. So what I'm going to do is delete this one for right now because I don't need it anymore. So let's move up the scale a little bit. This is going to be at four. So this has to be set up where it's going to be on the 6 and on my y-axis. So if I take this whole entire group and highlight it, now then, where is the center? The center of that 
is at 8 inches. And that makes sense. Because if I look right here, there it is. There's my 2, there's my 6, my H to center, then I've got 10 and 14. So what's going to have to happen here is I'm going to make a copy of this. Control C and Control V. And then with this located in the center, I need to make my x-axis, or it needs to be 8, and I need my y-axis at 6. And there I have it. It is now duplicated. Okay, let's do a control C and a control V. And there we have it. And let's move this one in place now. All right, my x-axis. Okay, the axis is still right here in the center. And on my x-axis, I still need to have it at 8. And on my y-axis, it's going to be 14. And there we go. So, all I need to do now is take my material and lay this out on the CNC machine exactly the way that this is done. And I'll be able to do a production run all at the same time without having to do stop each time and change it. And you know, the last time I did this, I wasted about 45 minutes just simply swapping out the individual tiles using a bump stop. This will eliminate this. Now, the nice thing about this is I know that my XY zero point is right down here in the bottom left-hand corner. And I know that I can come up on any one of these tiles and do the Z probe to set the Z axis. And then it will go ahead and cut all of these. So let's just see how long it's going to take. And right now the material is set from my 4 inches by 4 inches. So I'm going to have to change that now so it'll show everything. And that's going to be at my 16 by 16. So let's go ahead and change the material size here to 16 by 16. There we have the whole thing. And we're going to change the bit now to a 90 degree bit. There we go. Now we have the entire group sitting there, whoops, exactly where it needs to be. All right, and how long is that going to take to cut? Okay, and there we go. And this is used in just the default settings. I haven't done anything special, but it's going to take about an hour and 11 minutes to be able to cut this out. Now, what's nice about this, it's going to cut it all at one time, and I don't have to do anything else to it other than watch. Now, if I had to change out each one of these, okay, there was 16 of them, and I know it took me roughly about two minutes to change them out. So, two minutes times 16, yeah, that's a little over another half hour that was wasted that I just saved by being able to do this production run all at the same time. And the most important thing is you don't have to have the same design. As long as your material is the same size and the thickness is the same, you can do all of them at once. The only thing we have to be able to do now is go over to the CNC machine and set this up exactly the same. Now here are all the samples all set up ready for being able to cut. Now the only thing I haven't done is actually use my glue and tape method because that's what I would use on this. Now you do see a little bit of space right between that and that's because this group right here, these two rows, are exactly four by four. These were slightly smaller and remember I said the setup is critical. So I have the exact same spacing all the way through on this, on this too, that is a slight bit smaller. Now then, one of the things I want to be able to note is that these two rows are exactly four by four. And that's what I had set up on the computer. These outer two rows, this row and this row, is just slightly less than the four inch square. 
Now, they have two choices. All I would need to do is be able to go in and make the adjustment on the computer, or I can still set the zero point for my XY exactly in the center, and that will still carve. So as long as this layout is exactly the same as what's in the computer, that is going to carve correctly. My XY zero point is going to be right here at this bottom corner. And I can come over anywhere in here and do a Z probe. And then as far as the computer is concerned, this is one carve on a 16 by 16 board. It doesn't care that they are actually individual pieces. So the only thing that's left now is to be able to go ahead and take these down and carve them. So that would be the next step. But for the demonstration purposes today, just to show you how to be able to do it, I'm not going to carve it. Now, just so you know, the reason I'm not going to carve it is I've got the grandkids upstairs sleeping, taking a nap, and I don't want to wake them. Hi, everyone. Thank you for watching my video today. If you like the video, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button down below and the little bell next to it so you'll be notified on the different videos that I upload. Also, check out the videos over here to be able to stay up to date on the happenings in my shop. So again, thank you for watching my videos.